Welcome to this video about visualizing data in Q-Codes. So in this video, I'm going to show you two different tools which help you to visualize your data from the database. You can also use it for live plotting. And later on, we will have a look at monitoring data that is created, for example, during measurements as a figure of merit for uh, measurements going well. Um, the first thing that I would like to show you is how to install the so-called plotter tool as exactly we are talking about the inspector tool which helps you to visualize data from your database um, while, while the measurement is actually writing into the database uh, and here's how you do it. So first of all we have to navigate into the uh, corresponding GitLab or GitHub repository. Um, this is the uh, data plotter slash plotter um, repository and as you scroll through it you basically find all the information about the installation it's pretty simple you just do pip install minus e inside the folder uh, but first of all you have to download the repository and once you have it down downloaded you save it actually at the path where you want to use it later on and then you can just start the inspector tool um, and then you have to, of course, tell the path at which your database is actually belonging to. And then, uh, yeah, you can basically read data from the database. Um, and all further notes and um, further information is, of course, as always down below in my GitHub repository. And of course, also there's a, a link provided to the repository. Uh, where you find the plotter tool. Okay, so now I, as you can see here, I have plotted the, uh, the, I have saved the file in the according path and now I'm going to my terminal and I'm navigating to the point where I'm basically exactly one uh, directory above the uh, just cloned um, GitHub repository. Uh, so you can see here, if I do ls, you can see that my plotter master branch copy is right inside here. Okay, so here you can see I just say pip install minus, minus e plotter minus master and then it basically starts the installation of all the packages and basically there we are. Okay, so after installing the tool, uh, now I will just quickly show you how it basically works. Um, so as you can see here, um, I'm again inside the, uh, inside the terminal and I have my Q codes environment activated already. Um, and you can see that I'm inside the uh, plotter master folder. So uh, in order to activate the tool now, I have to say python apps slash inspector uh, dot pi. And then I have to tell the db, oh, the db path, uh, which is dot slash dot dot slash x Experiments DB. Oh, I think I forgot the. Yeah, I have to tell minus minus DB path like this. Okay, so now I'm running the tool, and here's basically the uh, graphical user interface that you will receive once you start the tool. Um, on the left side, you can see the entries of your database. In my case, this is basically the different days where I produced some tutorial videos. Um, and the IV sweeps that have been stored inside that database. So first of all, you can see the run ID, which is a unique identifier, uh, which is different for all the measurements contained in the database. Then you see the experiment, the sample name, uh, and then you can also see when the measurement has been started, when it has been completed, and the records. Um, the interesting thing is that this is basically uh, live. So if there's a measurement running right now, if this would be a running measurement, it would also be displayed and that makes it very interesting as you will see in a second. Um, so, okay, now let's just say uh, this is my measurement. Then if I double click it, you will see that another window is popping up. And I will just quickly show you that window right now. Um, okay. Uh, so here's what that window would look like. So first of all, you can see the data set, the data selection, which has been uh, yeah, well, saved by the data saver, or in that case, it was by the loop. Um, you can see that I have a current, a voltage, and a time. Um, 
And then on the right side, you can see that the voltage is supposed to be my X axis. And now I can plot basically everything against uh, this. So I could, for example, plot the voltage against the voltage. Well, that's a one on one thing. I could also plot the current against the voltage. And then you see that my scale is changing and also the label inside the plot is changing. Then I can choose tight layout so that it fits right into my window. And I can, of course, also produce several plots if I want to plot more than one set of data. The interesting thing is that you and you can see that up here that there is a refresh interval which you can set. That means you can basically um, update the data set that is plotted and that allows you to live plot your data. And this is basically also the preferred way to plot, for example, data if you have a uh, more difficult data uh, acquisition running than just a loop. Uh, you could just, for example, go ahead and use the data saver and then with this tool, you can basically live plot everything. Furthermore, due to this, um, due to the structure that you just saw, it's also easier to basically scan through the data and you have this copy button down here. And if you press that and then you insert, then you will basically get a uh, image file of this uh, graphs that we just produced. Um, yeah. And there's of course a lot of, uh, a lot more to discover here. Um, I suggest you just play around with it a little bit and find out what the inspector tool offers you. Um, then the other thing that you can see here is um, if we have a look at our data sets, then we can see down here that there's something else connected to the data set. And this is actually uh, the snapshots that we just learned about. So we, may, we produce a snapshot at each, at each measurement, which is being displayed here. And uh, this allows us to actually see what the snapshot for each individual um, measurement looks like. So this is also very useful if you want to look up something uh, inside your snapshots. And it also helps you to visualize it, makes sure uh, that you actually uh, produce the snapshot. So you can make sure that, uh, there's a, that there is actually a snapshot existing. And then of course, again, if you click on that uh, data set, then you will be referred uh, to a plot once again. Okay, um, so this is the first tool that I wanted to show you, but there's a second one, which is also pretty interesting. And this is if you want to monitor your data. Um, so the plotter tool is interesting because it allows you to visualize data also graphically, but let's just assume you wanted to cool down your cryostat and you wanted to know how the temperature is changing and you are just interested in knowing is it already cold or not, or maybe displaying all the different pressures inside your cryostat in a browser window. Um, and this is where the monitor tool, which is also provided by Q codes or inside the Q codes package comes in pretty handy. Um, in order to start the monitor tool, we go back to our terminal where we already started the inspector tool just before. And now what we have to do is we have to start our monitor tool. And this basically works uh, as follows. You just say Python minus M and then Q codes, uh, Q codes dot monitor dot monitor enter and then when you hit enter you're basically um, referred to a browser window and i will just show that to you right here uh, so this is the browser window that you will receive um, inside this browser window you don't see anything right now it just says status waiting so there's basically nothing in here so far so how do we now get the uh, data into that browser window well, um, as you may remember back in the uh, video about stations, um, about the about initializing stations by YAML files, you may remember that there was a, uh, a phrase about monitoring, which you could set to true. Um, this is basically telling Q codes to stream the data out to the monitoring. So this basically opens up an API, which then helps this monitoring tool here, which runs in a different kernel, by the way. Um, to visualize your data or to, to yeah, monitor your data. Um, so how is that done now again? Because we don't want to go back to the other video. Um, I will just show you right now. So first of all, as always, we have to import Q codes. 
mm, sqc. Um, then we will then we will as always create our set of dummy instruments um, and all the different parameters as I will just show you in a second. Um, okay, then we copy that in here once again. So here we go. This is just everything uh, that that has been done in a previous video already. Um, so if you want to know what this actually is, just go back in the playlist or uh, have a look at the GitHub repository, which is linked below the video. Um, now we just run that um, and we end up by defining this loop experiment here. This is the two dimensional loop. Um, the next thing now is we want to monitor certain values inside that loop. And in order to do so, we just import the monitor tool as well inside our um, Python uh, kernel over here and then we create a new object which is monitor um, which is that from that class monitor and we tell which data we want to stream into the monitor like that and now if we have a look at our monitor we can see that there are some values streamed in here of course there's nothing happening so far so we just see the time is running up here um, but there's nothing actually happening to that data. That is because we didn't start the loop yet. But now if we go ahead and for example say uh, we want to run our loop as we usually do um, with as a background task with live plotting, then we basically start to plot our data. But at the same time, we can also see that if we go back to the monitoring over here, that our values are constantly changing. So this allows us to monitor what is actually happening to the data. For example, if you don't want to use a live plot for that. Um, but as I also said, it could also be useful if you just want to monitor the cooldown of your cry stat or something like that. Um, I hope that has been useful for you. In the next videos, uh, we are going to have a look at how you can actually read the data from your database and then use pandas, uh, the pandas data framework to analyze your data. Um, I hope that's interesting for you and then see you in the next one.